right now, boy. Yeah, it's been forever. We're supposed to have done this ages ago. I can't believe I was no, right. ever. Um, no, you know me. I always go back. I always, I'm always in hiding, man. I know you're you're in hiding, but you're not always in hiding. Not always in hiding. Not always in hiding. I pop out here and there. You know me. Yeah, I know. All right, cool. Hi, I'm a queer geography fan with the British Blacklist, and it's my pleasure and overdue excitement oh, to speak to. Uh, what's your name again? Um, oh, look at you. There you go. Oh, what's his name? <laughs> Shit. Some guy. Some Please, guy. you introduce yourself and tell me what you do. You tell me what you do. Uh, yeah, I'm Tussin Cole. Um, you know, I tell stories for a living, sometimes playing people, different people. Yeah, man. Why did you go to sweet boy mode? What's all this? I oh, know, you know me, I get shy. Like, you know me, I get shy. Like. People always get shy talking about what they do. And that's yeah, why yeah. I, usually in our interviews, I like to say, you tell me, because I can assume and say, you're an actor. And you might be like, yeah, but I also produce, I also write. And yeah, I'm like, you know, I don't do the things yet, but obviously those, those are things that I'm looking forward to doing. But until I start doing them, until I get like certified credits, then you can't say, you can't say it. You know what I mean? But right now. I hear you. That's why I say I'm a storyteller because producing is definitely a form of storytelling and directing is definitely a form of storytelling and writing is definitely a form of storytelling. So <laughs> not a fault under that umbrella. <laughs> I hear you, I hear you, I get it. But yeah, storyteller is very, very good because I think people can reduce the person in front of the camera to not being in control of telling the story because right. it's not always theirs to tell, but like you are delivering a character. Um, no. How are you? I'm good, you know, I'm good. I'm, I'm in a better place now today. I was in a, I was like, I need to work harder. I had one of them days. Yeah, I had one of them days. And I was like, I need to work harder. I'm not working hard enough. But um, what, what made you feel like? I feel like you're working. I feel like I'm in a weird place because I've got so much things coming out. Yeah. Because I'm not out, I can't gauge where I'm at. I'm in a good place because I know like I'm able to do things and able to have conversations, obviously, like with yourself and, and people over today and talk about stuff that I actually care about, I'm actually passionate about. Yeah. I'm actually proud about, you know? So um, I think it's kind of like transitioning into that stage where it's like, yo, like, I know I'm hitting a new level, but I know I'm not where I wanna be, but I need more. But yeah, I'm in a good place. I'm, I'm, I'm blessed, man, I'm blessed. So, I, you know, like even just talking to you is kind of just, you know, putting myself at ease, like, yo, this is actually happening, you know? I think maybe, is it because, you know, like, well, we work in a creative arts and sometimes yeah. and when it's project to project and also you've got scheduled release dates, yeah, you've got yeah, stuff yeah, yeah. you can't talk about for so long and yeah. then all of a sudden you've got to yeah. talk about it a thousand times over and junk it slightly. Yeah. And then also you're, you, some, you, you make believe, you know, some of the stories are real to life, yeah, yeah. making believe. So it can be, I can understand how it can be hard to hold on to reality and like, yeah, is it right now. Yeah. But can you describe your life in one sentence? My life in one sentence, my life's evolving, man. Like just learning something and growing and evolving from that and, you know, trying to get better just in different aspects in life. You know? mm. Evolving's a good word. We're all evolving yeah. all the time. Yeah, yeah. I'm evolving. Every day yeah. I'm evolving. Yeah. You've got it figured out. There's something else. There's something else, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, wakes me up. So it was good to see you the other day. Um, have you finished Top Boy? Of course. How quickly did you, what did you, did you, had you seen it before? Did you have some preview thing? No, I, I, I did like the two episodes before. I think I did it in a space of like two, three days. Same. Um, who's your favourite character? That's Sully, man. Is it? Okay. Yeah. It's like Sully and Deshane. It's like, it's like both of them, though, because it's like the ambition of Deshane. You know what I mean? He's so ambitious, but it's like, at what cost? Mm. You know what? This season, there was quite a lot, man. I was quite torn between the two because I, I really like Jax's character, Jasmine's character. I really... Yeah. I really like, yeah, she really grew on me this season, man, like... Even like Jamie, like just seeing him like lose. It's just like your job or like the effect it has on your family and you not being there and them growing without you and they're evolving, but like you're still in the same spot. But when you come out, you realize like it's not the same because it's like more people, man. But you know, I I, I love the show, isn't it? Like I love the show. Like it's the nuances of, of the effects that I know what that feels like. We don't focus on the effects. We don't focus on on the repercussions of certain things and what that does to people. You know what I mean? Like even those little moments when someone makes a drastic decision and it's like, yo, raw, I really, oh, I can't believe I've done that. Or like, am I right morally? And I think sometimes you've got to look behind the like, you know, the, the violence and whatever, and just look at the, the human and the characteristics and and just the morality of certain things. Or the morality, like, is it is the morale right of that? To be ambitious, but at what cost? And to do certain things for family. But can you live with yourself? That was a beautiful breakdown. And 
I wanted to ask more, but I don't want to spend the whole time talking about Top Boy. Yeah. But um, quickly, okay, which character gets on your nerves? Pebbles, man. She oh my God. Yeah, oh, bless her. Yeah. Bless her, but everyone was messaging me. She was <laughs> jarring, man. I was thinking, let's go, man. Billy, man. Pebbles, man. It's all hype, all hype, no brain. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's long. Um, and if they okay, any if, if the script fell in your lap for Talk Boy, which character would be like, oh my God, yes. I'd love to play this character. Boy, man, you know, we had a couple of situations, but it didn't really work out. Oh, no, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had a couple of situations, but I mean, you know, I'm a fan of the show. And like, they're my brethren, isn't it? Like, actually, like, yeah. actually, my friend that like, came yeah. to my, my actual brethren. So, like, as much as I'm a fan of the show, I want to work with my friends as well, innit? Like, Kadeem, obviously, Michael, obviously, yeah. Jazz. Like, I think she's amazing. I uh, see, like, people that I know that I've worked with, and it's just that. Like, you yeah. just want to work with your friends and do something that's young and current. So, like, yeah. I mean, if the situation was right and it, and it came up, it's just like a win-win to me personally. But, I mean, we'll see in it. You never know, man. All right, all right cool. Let's talk about 61st Street. Yes. Um, tell us a bit about your character and what his motivations are. I play Moses Johnson. Uh, yeah. Young kid, 17, south side of Chicago. Track star, you know. Got a scholarship on his way to college, on his way to be, you know, an Olympic prospect. That's his life. That's what everyone knows him for. He's a pillar in the community for those things. You know what I'm saying? Everyone knows him from the older kids to the young kids to the drug dealers on the block. Everybody knows Moses Johnson. You know, he's a good kid. You know what I mean? Product of his environment, but also not what everyone expects him to be. You know what yeah. I mean? He, he's a person that's defeating the odds. And, uh, you know, he's in a situation, wrong place, wrong time. One thing leads to another. He ends up, you know, being a fugitive, running from the law. And now he's just fighting for his future. You know, everything he's worked so hard for. Everything he tried not to be, he became in one instant. You know what I mean? So it's like, how do you beat the impossible? You know what it looks like. He's a black kid. Yeah. You know what they do to black kids. And, you know, we have so many examples. So it's just like, damn, like, I know what it looks like. I can't jeopardize my future for this. And it's like, him trying to fight for his future ends up costing him his future. Exactly. You know? So when I watched, I've watched, what, two episodes I think I've watched? So when I was watching it, what you're saying, I was just so frustrated that yeah. when you, I'm watching you go through those sequence of events that change your life forever, Moses, yeah. to you, Moses' life forever. When I watch shows like that, I think sometimes it's worse than any horror film because it's like, it's just a reminder that life can just switch. Like you could walk down the street, I could go into a shop, think I'm doing, minding my business, Something goes left and that's it. What's it like when you're in shows, roles like this and maybe in the world, keeping it in the world of 61st Street, where you know you're enacting something that is so real and it's a reminder to yourself. What's that like mentally? It's so hard because you know, like, this is what people go through on a day to day. Yeah, that's that's the part. Like, I've been through it growing up, mm. you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, going to the shop, coming back from school, you and your mates are chilling at the bus stop, feds pull up, oh, you fit the description of a robbery, da 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 da, -da. That was constant back in the day, you know what I mean? So I know what I know what that feels like. I know what it's like to be like having to be on your P's and Q's, you know? I've seen people help their friend in a situation and it goes left. Seen it, been it, been the victim of it, you know what I'm saying? So you always want to do it with justice and, and, and sometimes it's so hard because you've been through, you're trying to make sure that everything's perfect, everything's authentic. And then sometimes it, it's crazy because, you know, it's not your story. Like, you know, there's one aspect of it and there's a bigger, bigger theme and you're trying to fight for everything to be right. And mm. I think that's what we try to do. And that's what we try to do here on the show is try to make these experiences and situations and nuances real. And we had conversations and that to try and make that achievable. You know what I mean? Having like, yo, I don't think this is working. I don't think that's working because mm. at the end of the day, I know what it's like. I know people who go through that. I empathize with people who have been through it I still going for it and, and it's like you know you're just trying to do it justice and you're just trying to make sure that in a story you're telling you're a vessel for this and 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 for the bigger picture and for the conversation and for for evoking emotion and, and, and making people think differently or people who who don't have to go through that or don't have to think about these things and just live life freely make them think wow like shit like maybe I should you know change this or maybe we should take more care into this because yeah. as a black man you know you're having to live with certain things that no one should live with there's barriers and lives that man's having to like weave around just to make sure man's on the right path just to make sure man's doing the right thing just to make sure that 
we're living life in the best way by dodging these barriers like a man shouldn't have to live to that man should just be free and i feel like we don't have that privilege because of the stigma or just because of where we're coming from and i feel like these things are so universal so yeah so doing projects like this and is it cathartic sometimes because it's like you get to do that but then you've got this life where you're an actor you're in the space mm-hmm. where i care in it yeah you know what i mean when you care and you do something you care like sometimes you're just tired like okay you know, I put myself into everything I do, you know what I mean? Like, I, mm. I really try and give them my all. I really try and be focused. I really try and feel stuff. I really try and make sure it's, like, it's coming from a real place. It's real emotion. I don't want to act just for the sake of acting. I, I, you know what I mean? I don't want to just, oh, yeah, I'm telling a story about this. Like, I really want people to, like, feel and, and, and empathize or sympathize. Or maybe you think, bro, oh, like, I need to change because this is a real... It's a real life story and, and you know, you I'll make sure you're doing it. It's, it's, it's just dudes, you know? Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I proper care. I proper care about everything. You know, you always want to be a part of things that are great, but also like when you've got real stories, you want to make sure that it's real. Do you say that, that like, so you go for it, you put your all into it and you care. And then how does Tosin like get rid of that character essentially? Not get rid of it, but then because you got to protect yourself and go out in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll be Moses. Like, oh, like, to be honest with you, like, Cause I did this and I went straight to house party. Oh my god, yes! I'm so excited. Yeah, cause I did I did this straight to so I was just laughing. Okay. But then, but literally I had like a two three day turnaround. Say like I wrapped like July the seventh. I was filming by like July tenth. So even my first week of doing a comedy, I was still serious. Do you know what I mean? Like it's a comedy, and I was like, I think I'm too serious. Like I need to. Like literally, I just finished filming the court scenes. Wow. Like the last court scenes, me in court, then I've come straight from court to basically. <laughs> and that's life, you know, because that's like you could literally be in court yeah. and then go make or go see your friend or something and be it's mad. And then and then I think because I was still so like in a dramatic world, like I remember I had to phone up Samson Kayo. I was like, bro, am I funny, bro? <laughs> I was like, bro, like, am I funny? Like, like literally, I was like. Cause I felt like I was taking it too serious. Yeah. And where I ain't done a comedy in a while, everything's been like, everything's been so hard drama for like six months. So it's just like in your bones. And I was like, bro, like, like no one's laughing on set. I don't know. I feel like, like, am I funny, bro? He's like, I'm like, do people laugh with me? Do laugh? Like I was proper like mad insecure. Oh, like. Yes, yeah. And then to go on to Till, you know what I mean? You're in this world, like the Emmett Till story later on. Yes. Back into this, like, you know, people calling you, Nigger, and, yeah, you know, like, like this. We thought we're trying to fight for justice then, but there's no justice back then. At the end of it, I was tired. I was tired. Like, literally, everything was back to back. I finished house party. I think I had like five days off, mm. so I, I quickly went home just to see family for like five days. Because if I didn't go back home, I wouldn't have seen no one for like ten months straight. Okay. So I was like, I need to go home quickly just to yeah, get a recharge. Yeah, yeah. And I had to shift the change schedule up a bit because they wanted me to go straight in from two days so by the time I finished everything especially with COVID I'm not seeing family I was just tired man I was just like yo I need a break I kind of need to decompress and I kind of need to just shut everything out and, and that's why I kind of yeah. yeah I kind of yeah just want everything to come out and mm. now it's like I had time off and I'm like yo <laughs> I had so much time off like I need to do something. So it's nice to kind of get like your, your juices back. I feel like I'm kind of slowly rejuvenating. Sometimes it's just living, you know, just living and just taking time off. Like obviously I could have went to something straight away and kept on working, but I think I would have been burnt out, man. Yeah, you don't want to do that. You know, been, yeah, I would have been burnt out because I give so much, you know what I mean? That's what I'm saying, you've got to protect yourself. Um, Courtney, I spoke to Courtney yesterday and he was like, you are silly and you're funny. And yeah. you guys went to dinner or something and he said, because I was asking, what's it like working with you? So I'm going to ask you that back. Working yeah. with Courtney and you know Adrienne Ward, who yeah. Hammond, who plays your mother, and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So what's it like? Again, I don't want to stay in the deep emotional side of things, but obviously the show isn't. No, yeah, deep, like, but... it's deep, isn't it? Like, like I wouldn't say to you like it's not a lot, but at the same time, you know, like when you're there and you, you're familiar with people, and you can't be morbid six months straight, man. Exactly. Like, I'd go into a depression, like you know yeah. me. Like I like to have a laugh and a giggle when. I, I take it onto set. Like obviously, like when it's time to get serious and it's time to like you know lock in and you know I'm fully dedicated to that. You know what I mean. But at the same time, it's fun in it. Like you know what I mean. Like you know I'm always joking. Courtney's like he's a gentleman. You know what I mean. Like real gentleman, real smooth, real calm, yeah. gravitas. You know he's got a lot of gravitas yeah. to him. Yeah. You know what I mean, and I admire him for that. You know what I mean. And he he, he gets done in a way 
He doesn't need to be a dick about it, but he's so gentleman in his approach. And Dream, she's amazing, great actress, you know what I mean? But she, like, we're all goofballs, you know what I mean? We're all laughing, we're all teasing each other. We're like a family, you know what I mean? And it's, yeah, I don't know, it's like that black thing. It's like, you know, like, black people, like, you can go through something traumatic, but once you go through it, it's just jokes. It's just jokes, I get Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, like, we, just, yeah. Just, like, even, like, calling Mr. Hollywood, you know what I mean? He's a man with all the Hollywood stories. He loves hosting, you know what I mean? And, you know, it's just great, man. Like, Mark, Mark's Canadian. He's just, like, he's just funny. Like, everything is just punchline after punchline. Yeah, 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 punch yeah. Line. Bentley, you know, that's my little bro. Like, we play basketball together. You know, we, we talk about everything. Music, fashion. Yeah, yeah, always yeah. trying to outdress each other and shit, yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like, it's just dope to have a cool cast and people who respect it, but also people can have a good time as well. But yeah, man, you know me, I'm silly, man. I, you know, a lot, not a lot of people know that because, you know, I try and I try and tone it down. And, Shout out, Mr. Aloof. Yeah. I, I must say that you're well liked. Like you have an energy. Um, anytime we post about you, it's like yeah. you, you, there's a lot of yay, go, a lot of support yeah, yeah, yeah. from your peers in the industry. So, and you said that, yeah. you know, a bunch of them. Like, and I see, because yeah. I feel like I'm look, outside looking in when I see you guys out and together. Samson is your, like someone that you can call up and... Yeah. So what's that camaraderie like? And I know because the UK, we're burgeoning now. We're about to, yeah. like, watching you guys yeah. grow is wonderful. Keeps me busy, yeah. but it's yeah. wonderful. What's that yeah. network like? As it's, 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 just, it's just like a lot of my friends in the industry, like they're not industry friends, it's like my actual brethren, you know? Yeah. My actual friends. And it's like, I always build things organically. I'm like one of them people, like people might see me the first time and they'd be like, oh, like Tosin's a bit standoffish. Because I don't know you. Like, that's the South London in me. I just don't know you in it. Like, like mm. over time, like, like I'll see people and I'm not afraid to give people their flowers, you know, like if you do something sick and I see you, I'm going to hold you up. If I rate what you do and I'm like, yo, bro, like, yeah, like what's your process? Like, what do you mean? Because I love talking about work. I like growing and mm. a lot of my friends that you see me with, like, man's just in, connected just through life. Like Samson, Damson. I knew Damson since I was like 18 before he started acting. Mm. Just being from South London. Samson Kyle used to go to my uncle's barbershop. Oh, wow. You know what I'm saying? Tom and Damson used to go to the same school. Yeah, yeah. I met Aaron Fontaine on a holiday and I found out he was friends with Samson. Now, him and Samson are boys. Me and Calvin live together. Do you know what I'm saying? Like Calvin Denver, me and Calvin Denver live together when we did Hollywood together. So it's like yeah, yeah. these things are just organic. And then you meet one person. I met Samson through Calvin. Then I found out Aaron knows Samson. Oh, he used to go to my uncle's barbershop. And then da 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 and da 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 And it's just organic. And it's just, I want the best for everyone, innit? Do you know what I mean? Like, and I'm one of them people like, I'm always opinionated, isn't it? Like, <laughs> if I don't like something, I don't like it, innit? Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to be like, oh, yeah, boom, 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 boom. And I always talk about stuff like, sometimes I might have an unpop unpopular opinion, you know what I mean? Like, do I need to go on a tweet about it and make it public? No, I don't. But if you want to talk about work and discussions and art oh, and what you like and what I like and what you think is good and what I don't think is good, I'm, I'm up for that. But yeah, these are my brethren. And it's good to have people like, you know, right now I'm staying with Samson Kyle. I was with Samson and that yesterday, you know what I'm saying? So... It's good to have a network of people who are from the same place where you're from, who do the same things that you do, and we all want each other to win. I didn't know you were born in America. Yeah, I was born in Florida. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why are you cheating, man? I thought you was originally. No, 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 no. That's why the source is a bit different. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. no, no, but I'm a proper London boy through and through, though. Yeah, yeah. Like proper, like proper. Like when I come out here, like eventually, you know, I was younger, I was like, oh, yeah, but you was born in America. Like, obviously, I like American things. Like, music basketball yeah. like, i love pancakes because you know my love for pancakes came out here like when i started <laughs> having crepes i was like what the fuck is this shit like you know what i mean but obviously like i've got an essence of that but man's a proper proud south london bro i say that with whole chest bro like whole What's chest that? I'm like everywhere. I'm like Southeast. I grew up in Thamesmead, lived in okay. Death, a bit Surrey Keys, Elephant and uh -huh. Castle, Kennedy, but like, man, just, I just say Southeast because I don't like to be tied to one place and I'm like a proper Southeast. You know what I'm saying? I'm a Southwester, then I moved to West, so I'm like a. Yeah. Oh, no, West. Ooh. Hey, 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 hey. Ooh. Hey, hey. Bro. But yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, it's just good having people here. Like, we all help each other, Oops. give each other good advice. Like, I'll do this, but why are you doing that? You know what I mean? So it's good to have like minded people and good people around you, you know what I'm saying? So keeping you stand and grounded. Yeah, keeping you grounded, keeping you yeah, grounded, uplifting each other, like, yo, bro, that's sick, oh, bro. Like, yeah, bro. All my friends, like, Bashi and that can attest to this and came, like, when they do something, I voice them, I'm like, yo, my bro, out. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Because I'm a fan of my brethren, isn't it? Like, like, what they do, I'm a fan of them, like, you know what I mean? I'm a fan of the decisions that they make. I'm a fan of them as people. Rick Ross has a lyric, like, all of my 
my homies are people that I admire. I admire all my friends and some loud. Um, before Bola tells us to go, and I feel like, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. A line about house party and a line about Emmett Till, because I'm gassed. And house party, can I just say something? I'm old, yeah. I'm your auntie. Are you going to say you know that I'm old? No, I said, I know, I know, I know, I know your house party fan. I know, I know, I know. It's no, I know house party, lyric for lyric, word for word, everything. Yeah. I'll say this everything you think it's going to be, let's get out of here. It's fun, isn't it? Okay. I mean, it's fun. It's a fun film. So I don't want people thinking, oh, yeah, it's kid and play. Or, yeah. oh, it's just fun, it's fresh, and it's new. Okay. It's, it's not 90s. It's not, it's not that era. It's a new era. It's a new day. Okay. How would they throw apart? How would two young black men throw apart today? It's not kids. It's young black men. Okay. How are they for a party today? You know what I'm saying? There's some ho- there's some homages, yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? There's some there's some references to the past, but I reckon it's just new, it's fresh. It's a feel good film that you're just gonna go and if you want to go and have a good laugh, a good good laugh, then come and see it. If you want to come to judge it and think this ain't no kid and play, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They ain't do these days movies in the last movie. You know, so I'll just come and just and it's like it's. It's a, it's a movie where you can watch with your friends and your family okay. and you can just go in and you can just have a laugh. Like, it's one of those films. I had fun filming it. I laughed filming it. Okay, good. Hopefully it all translates, you know what I'm saying? Because I ain't done a comedy in time. So, like, as much as I'm nervous about 61st Street because I've done drama for a while, so I'm kind of, like, com- like, I ain't done a comedy, especially like, with this much pressure as well in terms of, like, it being a remix. So I'm, I'm very nervous, but I'm also... I want to see, I'm excited to see the scenes that I thought were funny that I went in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I think it's just fun. Until, yeah. Medgar Evers. That's a Medgar big Evers, one. yeah, yeah, yeah. Medgar Evers, you know, I pay a young Medgar Evers. This assistant, you know, Mammy, Till through, you know, what she's going through. And I think Danielle Deadwell, I think she gives, you know, a, ph- a phenomenal. Mm. I mean, she, she, I remember seeing her do one scene in one take and it was like, yeah, we don't even need anything else. Mm. I think it's going to be a heavy one. I think it's going to be, you know, you know, it's going to be a heavy one, but also, you know, it's a story that needs to be told because I don't really know about him at all. I remember Kanye referenced it, like, I think through the while. Yeah, yeah, through the while. Yeah. Through the while. I remember Rick Ross referenced it. And I remember saying him at all. I used to hear it all the time. And I was thinking, what? what? I remember one day I Googled it. You know what I mean? And then obviously I knew about it through there, just like over time, just being like, what is this lyric? I have even reference or like, you know, like people have discussions like I'm at till, you know, but you, you never knew what it was. So I just feel like it's it's, it's a relevant story. Um, it's, it's it's you know it's heavy, but it's necessary. It's also a reminder, you know. Absolutely. It's also a reminder that like, you know some of these things that we we're fighting for back then are still technically fighting for right now. Okay. So um yeah, it's definitely uh it's definitely definitely one to watch for sure. I will be watching both and I trust you. I trust your judgment. I trust your trust your choices. Um yeah. Bola, just one more. One, one more, one more Bola, go on. One more. Yes, one more. 17 more. Um uh <laughs> it's <laughs> Nigeria versus Ghana. Are you Nigerian? Of course. No, why are you saying course for? So where are you watching it? You're not gonna watch it. Can you all your friends are Nigerian? Yeah, bro. Where are you Bola, watching come it? On. Bola knows the pattern already, isn't it? Bola? Come on. Bola, and even Bola, even behind the scene, that's why she hasn't even she's gonna come. Cut the interview just to... Trying to watch she's trying to get ready to watch the match. <laughs> you're not gonna watch it and make noise. You look are wicked, you know. How you look make us get off the plane like that? Do you see the clip? They get off the private plane and that and the stairs are like so low, it's not even a stair, they have to jump down the plane. They're trying to injure our players, man. I mean, any tactic necessary. Cali people are wicked, man. Yeah, wicked. wicked. I can't, I wish I was in Ghana, I'm crying. Um, oh. who do you think is gonna win? I don't just be sensible. Oh, I really know the pattern, man. Super Eagles all day, every day, man. Green, white, green to the day that I die. Is it me? Oh, that was way too much. Black stars. I'm going to look. I'm wearing my Ghana chain. Oh, mm. I've been, man. Aisha, my God. Okay. Uh, we had such a wonderful interview, and now you're trying to study you. it. No, you, um, you ruined it. I was asking a silly question. That was a silly question. Who do I think is going to win? That was a silly question. You were so here. I was thinking, wow, man, she needs to be on the Times or something like that. But you just said, is Ghana going to win? Mm. Well, I'm ready to go now. All right. Bye, babies. Thank you. Take care.